Hey everyone, it's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. I apologize right now for the really terrible lighting. I hate how half of my face is in the dark, but there's really nothing I can do at this point. I'm going to try to find another solution, but I'm coming to you from my new apartment. We just moved um, in here at the beginning of the month, September. And uh, aside from the bugs, I'm really enjoying it. I like how cozy it is. So it's been over three months since I've last done a haul and uh, a book haul. And in that amount of time, I've managed to acquire uh, quite a number of books. I have uh, 24 uh, books to show you today, as well as an assortment of magazines that I have gotten into as of late. This haul, I'm really fairly impressed with myself because I managed to get all of these books over the last several months and there were only two that I actually paid full price for. So I may as well start with those. The first is this one, Painless Grammar, um, by uh, Rebecca Elliott, PhD. This is the fourth edition, and um, I got this because I wanted to really study, improve my grammar, and this is because I may as well announce this here. I uh, have left my uh, library sciences program, um, because I was very uh, miserable and unhappy and uh, depressed. I had a lot of anxiety and a lot of um, stuff going on with that. And um, so I love libraries. It doesn't make me love them any less um, or make them any less important to me, but it just wasn't the school and the program were not for me. So I uh, moved on and uh, I started a new course. Um, it's a certificate in publishing. It's also a graduate studies kind of thing. And so um, I just started that last week. Um, but in preparation for starting that, I really wanted to get a better grasp of my grammar because that's something that I struggle with sometimes. I'm pretty good at catching really bad like punctuation or um, grammar, um, but I definitely need improvement in some stuff. So. I got this. The next thing I got is this Garfield Fat Cat 3-pack. <laughs> now, uh, hear me out. I When I went home uh, a couple months ago, I just really had this craving uh, to read Garfield. And I knew my sister had this book that she got from Christmas when she was like a kid ages ago. And I just couldn't find it at the house. I really wanted to read it, so randomly went, drove to the nearest chapters and picked it up. And that's the story. I just, I, I really wanted to read it. So uh, the next pile of books I will do are the ones that were used, obviously, that I got for a really good price. The first one that I'll show you is uh, Understanding Illuminated Manuscripts, A Guide to Technical Terms by Michelle P. Brown. Uh, this one, as you can see, pretty self-explanatory. It talks about and goes through, it's like a, it's like an alphabetized uh, glossary of terms uh, pertaining to Illuminate Manuscripts, which I studied in a medieval art class uh, last year that I did, and uh, I absolutely love them. I love Illuminate Manuscripts. I think they're some of the most beautiful handcrafted things ever made. And so to have this, um, to understand them further and know more about them is great. This next thing that I got for $3 is People Tribute Commemorative Shoe to um, Catherine Hepburn. It's called Remembering Kate, and this must have come out right after she died in 2003, and it's in really great condition considering, um, I mean, I've, it's 13 years old and it's still like in perfect condition, so once upon a time it was like 17 bucks and um, I got it for three so that's great it has beautiful pictures of her I uh, finished reading a biography about her um, fairly recently and so I'm loving this woman uh, and I love learning more about her going back to my publishing course for a second I uh, the course that I'm taking right now is in trade publishing and for that I did get a textbook which is publishing for profit successful bottom line management for book publishers by Thomas Wool. So it's pretty self-explanatory. It's about book publishers and the trade publishing industry, and I've only had one reading for it so far, but like, I, I think it will be very informative and um, constructive to uh, what I'll be learning about, of course. The next thing I have to show you, which I was very surprised that uh, I found, I saw it uh, secondhand, uh, at a bookstore or maybe it wasn't even secondhand but just really greatly reduced because of like slight damage I think to the back cover or something and my boyfriend was like oh we're getting this like there's no way we can pass it up it was like it's like 30 bucks regular and we got it for six and it is Blankets by Craig Thompson this beast of a graphic novel graphic memoir really um, talks about his life as a kid and um, the relationship that he had with his brother and uh, I remember reading it a couple years ago and being blown away by the not just the artwork which is amazing but by the story 
itself and how unique it was, I think, up to that point. I had never read anything like it before, so I'm really glad to have it. The next thing I have to show you is How to Be a Woman by Caitlin Moran. I found this at Valley Village and was so psyched because I think I'd been looking at the library earlier that day and like it's it's checked out pretty often, I, I think. Um, yeah, there was like tons of holds on it and it's from like 2012? I just checked, 2011, so the fact that it's still highly requested at the library says something. And so it's kind of like a manifesto of like what it means to be a woman in today's society and just seems very feminist and kick-ass and I've heard a lot of great things about it. Another book I found, and I think it was five dollars at a used bookstore, is How to Read a Book, The Classic Guide to Intelligent Reading by Mortimer J. Adler and Charles Van Doren. And this is a uh, revised edition I think it's like the fifth edition or something. Um, like this book was originally uh, published in the 40s. So um, the fact that it's been given new editions and stuff says something and it's based on, it's the title is self-explanatory, how to read a book. And it goes into like poetry and dissertations and like everything and a, a way to a approach reading something. And I'm always going to read it the way I want to, but it's nice to have that new perspective and maybe gives me more ideas on like um, what to try when I'm reading and maybe different ways of thinking critically. And the second last book that I got used is called Just My Type, a book about fonts by Simon Garfield. I saw this at Chapters uh, a while ago and wanted to pick it up new, but I was like, no, just check on Amazon. They might have it for a better price. And they did. Um, it arrived to me in a little bit of a worse condition than I would have preferred, but Whatever, it's done now. I'm just really excited to have my own copy. I already started it and I'm like 60 pages in, but it's just so cool. It talks about the history of all these fonts and tells the story behind them and everything and has pictures in them and like examples and stuff. And fonts, I, they related to books. And so of course that really appeals to me. So. I'm very happy to have it. And the last used book that I'm going to show you is called Bitch Fest. Ten years of cultural criticism from the pages of Bitch magazine edited by Lisa Jervis and Andy Zeisler. Um, I got this for $6.99 I think at a used bookstore. Um, it used to be $20. So yeah, it's a collection of articles from Bitch magazine. I will be going back to that later. The next batch of books here are um, all new. Um, but they were, I, I got them at a greatly reduced price for one reason or another. So the first one here is Classic Movie Crossword Puzzles from TCM. Uh, they uh, do, TCM is Turner Classic Movies, if you don't know what that is. Um, it's a channel that uh, I love and appreciate very much because it's about classic movies. And um, they do a monthly uh, sort of TV guide, a viewer's guide. Um, just to show what's coming up each month and at the end of them they always have these crossword puzzles that are themed to that issue and somebody compiled them and they published it as a book. So I have them and I've been printing them off and doing them at work during dead periods, don't tell anybody. The next thing I have to show you, I got um, the other day um, at a uh, literary festival. It was on a table for reduced books and it's The Real Food Solution, Achieve Your Weight and Wellness Goals, Increase Your Energy and Give Your Family Delicious Real Food by Wendy McCallum. Uh, this was published by a local publisher uh, to me and um, I have this lady's first book and we cook a great deal of recipes from that book and so this new one came out like last year and so to find it uh, like greatly reduced, I think it was like five bucks, was uh, really lucky and um, so I'm excited to try some new recipes from this lady. The next book I have to show you comes as no real surprise. I got Harry Potter and the Cursed Child Parts 1 and 2 based on an original new story by J.K. Rowling written by John Tiffany and Jack Thorne and it's, well, it's primarily written by Jack Thorne. And I had thoughts about this. Uh, I talked about it in my August wrap-up, which, yes, if you want to hear my thoughts on that, you can go there, but I read it, and haha. -ha. The next book I have to show you, I found at a Sears outlet store um, for a greatly reduced price, and it is Lover, Portraits by 40 Great Artists by Juliet Hesselwood. And I got this for, I think, six bucks. And it is a collection of these beautiful portraits that artists did of their mistresses. And the sort of background and story on uh, how that all came about. And I love art history, and I'm kind of intrigued that um, to see a collection, uh, a specified collection, 
and I look forward to reading it. The next book I have to show you I'm super excited about and it is called The Perfection of the Paperclip, Curious Tales of Invention, Accidental Genius, and Stationary Obsession by James Ward. I love stationery, I love office supplies, mostly because it brings us happy memories of school and writing and it's, you know, it's, it's like a cousin of books. Um, but guys, I saw this a couple months ago in chapters and really wanted to have it, but I couldn't justify spending $30, but then I think I found this on Amazon and wound up getting it for like four dollars and it's in perfect condition and I couldn't be happier but really one of the, ma the probably the main thing that grabbed me and made me want it instantly are these gorgeous end papers I mean look at them aren't they beautiful if you follow me on Instagram I did a post about it, the book a while back when I first met it um, but suffice it to say I'm very thrilled to have found this. I, uh, I started it uh, soon after getting it and right now I think I'm on the history of thumbtacks. So riveting! The next book I have to show you is The Gold Finch by Donna Tartt. This is the mass paperback edition so it's a nice little chunky brick. I was waiting and waiting for it to come out in this so that it would be more affordable to me and then I could buy it new but like you know not spend a fortune. So I got it for I think seven dollars when it came out. It's a, it's a little chunky book. I believe it's historical fiction. Uh, I've, I, I just know that I've heard amazing things about it. And I love that it's so small and compact and makes for good traveling reading. The next two books I have to show you are also teeny tiny. And the first one is Murder is Binding by Lorna Barrett. This is a cozy cat mystery. And it was somebody from my last program who um, got me sparked into the idea of reading these. I love the feel of it. It feels similar to Murder, She Wrote which is a show that I love so truly, madly, deeply. Um, now, the background of this story um, is that uh, it's in, set in a small town in New Hampshire that to get tourists to come to it, they opened up a, uh, like a, a street full of different bookstores. And this is where it's so cool, okay? You got um, a little knife and you got a book with a pair of glasses on it. In the corner, you got this little cute cat and you've got these bookstores, like there's one just just for cookbooks and one just for mystery books. I mean, how like cool is that? I know it's pretty kitsch, um, but still, like, yeah, I, you know, like they got the bookshelves out in the streets and everything. Like, I wish I lived in this town, you know, except for the murder. And the teeniest book in this haul is definitely Lady Susan by Jane Austen. These are the uh, Little Black Penguin Classics. This is number 81 out of, I think it's like, what is it, 200 that they did? Oh, sorry, 126 is what I'm seeing in the back. Anyway, this is the uh, posthumously released um, incomplete uh, work by Jane Austen told exclusively in letters and so that's gonna be really different for me it's gonna be a really different kind of Jane Austen experience but nonetheless I'm very excited because she is one of my favorite authors the next book that I got for reduced price is Joanna Bosford's magical jungle uh, an inky expedition and coloring book um, this uh, I, I, I've talked about her before on my channel she's my favorite adult coloring book author and I don't necessarily color her pictures. I mean, I do, but I just find I don't have a whole lot of time. I mostly get them um, as one would purchase, like, pieces of art, honestly, to be honest with you. I just love her style so much. And to have that possibility, I guess, that I could color everything if I ever, like, fell sick or, like, just wanted something to do. I want to learn to crochet during movies, but I can do this, too. And so... I'm, I'm just thrilled to have it. I got it for, I think, around like 10, 12 bucks instead of like 23. So that's always good. The next book I have in this pile is Sex Object by Jessica Valenti. Um, this is a memoir uh, that came out a few months ago. I got it uh, on reduced for, I think, uh, 20 because um, Chapters does that sometimes. They knock off a few bucks for their new releases. I read this already and talked about it in my July slash August wrap-up if you want to check that out, but I loved it. I really, really did. This is the kind of book I'm going to want to reread um, like pretty soon because I just blew through it so fast the first time, you know? And these last three books I have to show you, um, I either got for free or for a serious discount. And uh, the first one is, um, earlier I mentioned uh, a literary festival is where I got that cookbook. Um, 
I actually volunteered for that little literary festival. It's called Word on the Street. It's um, a really popular literary festival that takes place in different cities across Canada. Like Toronto's is coming up on the 25th around there. And anyway, our, ours was this past Saturday in Halifax. And uh, so I volunteered. And as a really generous gift, I got a certificate um, to a local bookstore that basically paid for the majority of this book and so I rushed <laughs> over there after I was done I really wasn't expecting that um, but anyway I saw this book and I'd heard about it and um, had never seen it in person but once I did I immediately got it I had like 10 minutes to catch my bus so I made a split de second decision and grabbed it and it's called Feminist Fight Club an office survival manual by uh, Jessica Bennett. It's for Sexist Workplace, and I love the little asterisk here that says book is 21% more expensive for men. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cheeky. So this is pretty self-explanatory. It um, talks about different terms like bro appropriation uh, for like um, men who take credit for women's ideas at work, just as an example. And it's um, really pretty. Um, I love the awesome end papers, well, sort of end papers here that have that have a lot of really cool like sayings in there. Um, I think this came out in Britain not too long ago and just made it here or something. So I'm excited to read this. I think it's going to be really cool and fun. The next book I got is one of my most anticipated releases for this year, and I was able to get it at a deep discount because I had spent I think thirty dollars a chapters or something buying a gift for somebody, and then I got like a ten dollar. Um, card to use during a certain period of time. So I used it toward this and so as a result a $17 book became like a $7 book or 6 or something. And it's, these are my words, The Residential School Diary of Violet Peshines. Um, not, um, Irene or Ruth Slipperjack is the author. Ruby Slipperjack. It's a very pretty name. But this is the newest Dear Canada Diary that just came out at the top of this month. And I've just been waiting and waiting for a new Dear Canada to come out. I think this is the first like new real diary in like two years or a year and a half. Normally they would, for the longest time, they were releasing one every six months or something, but they haven't. And so this has been highly awaited for me. Not a fan of how tiny it is. You know, I always love when they're thick and chunky, but whatever. I'm just really glad to have a new one. And this last book book I have to show you I got for free and it was a very generous arc sent to me by Candlewick Press, a press that I love. I love their books. I've got a number of them. And this book is called Snow White, a graphic novel by Matt Phelan. I, uh, when they sent me the arc I decided I wanted to do a proper review on it and so I did. I will link that down below. Um, it's a wonderful graphic novel retelling of Snow White and it's set in the 30s and um, it's done in this beautiful uh, watercolor, like um, gray washes with charcoal and some injections of color at times. But it was just a really beautifully done rendition of the story. And I'm very grateful, again, that they sent that to me. So the last assortment of things I have to show you here um, is just like one comic book and some magazines that I've just really gotten into over the past four months. And I'll show you the comic book first. It is Paper Girls uh, by Brian K. Vaughn, Cliff Chang, Matt Wilson, and Jared K. Fletcher. And this, um, I think they were just selling um, to at the comic book store because like it's the very first one. Um, there's, um, there's a couple of volumes out now of, you know, that compiles like whatever it is 10 issues or something so I got this for a dollar and I like it because it's real I think it's going to tell me whether or not I want to continue on with the series um, I'm pretty sure I do because I love uh, Brian K. Vaughn's saga and I really love that it's like this badass troop of paper delivery girls I think it is I, I don't know I don't know but they're like 12 years old and so they're like on the cusp of like you know, womanhood, young adulthood. I don't know that they have a paper route. Maybe I'm just taking that literally from the title. Um, but either way, I'm super intrigued to read this. So as for the magazines, with my program, I'm sort of dipping my toe into, um, like, Canadian publishing and, um, like, 
literary criticism and stuff like and stuff that relates to what I'm going to be studying in my program. So to that end, I've um, been picking up, I started to pick up a couple of literary magazines um, related to Canadian publishing. And so one of them is Canadian Children's Book News. Um, this isn't the first issue that I got. The last issue that I got was like the 40th anniversary or something. So they had all these characters on the front, like Paper Bag Princess and Franklin and stuff like that. And it was, it was fantastic. But yeah, I want to know what's happening in children's publishing in Canada. So I think this is a good way to sort of keep in touch with that kind of thing. And the other one that I got is Quill and Choir. Um, this is the fall preview issue. I haven't gotten the latest one. Um, I might not get them like every month. I may only get them every so often because they are on the more expensive side than your typical magazines. Um, I'd love a subscription to them, but it's really, it's kind of difficult where I move every year, or at least I have been for the last three years. I've moved like six times. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to, ha to be getting into this kind of thing and to sort of like um, keep in touch with what's new, what's coming, and like what's really popular. So the other thing that has grabbed me um, as of late are feminism magazines. And um, the first one, and probably the most important one to me that like that I'm like just really crazy in love with now, is Bitch Magazine. This is the newest one, and it's it probably is like my favorite cover of anything, book or magazine wise, ever. Like it's the most amazing intricate thing. Like I, I'm not really do, I'm not able to do it justice here. But if you Google image this cover. It's just nuts. It's got like all these like feminism classic book titles. Like it's freaking Sailor Moon Mermaid Cats. How amazing is that? And there's crystals everywhere. I love the colors. Sorry, I had to gush about this cover for a minute. I haven't even read the issue yet. I still just keep picking up this cover just to look at it and I always find something new. But um, there's Bitch Magazine. I also um, just recently picked up Bust Magazine. This is the 100th issue um, and you got Tina Fey featured in it. Um, I'm not sure like what separates this magazine from say Bitch or from the other one that I got, but I'm still excited to learn more about it and figure out if maybe I want to be buying this one on the regular. I know Bitch, I'm going to be buying on the regular. And um, the third magazine that I picked up is Miss Magazine. Um, I've heard of it before, never picked it up, but this one is a gorgeous pink and highlights the gender gap. So I'm interested. I'm very interested. So I'm glad that I got these. Um, they make for very educational uh, reading. So those are all the books that I had to show you today. Comment down below and let me know some of the books that you are reading right now or what books you think that I should be picking up. But I think that is it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great week and I shall see you soon with another video. Bye everyone!